We at FDA have responsibilities for making sure that pet food is safe and nutritious for your pet. We also offer advice for safe handling of pet food and treats in the home. For safe handling, no one plays a more important role than you do. Hello, my name is Dr. April Hodges. I'm a nutritional scientist at the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. Most pet food is safe, but sometimes pet food and treats can become contaminated with bacteria that can not only make your pet sick, but you sick. Salmonella is perhaps one of the best known bacteria that may be found in pet food or on pet treats, but it's not the only one. Contamination by salmonella and other types of bacteria may not be frequent, but it happens. On average, 60 pet food or treat products are recalled each year due to salmonella contamination. Human illness can be caused by contact with contaminated pet food or treats. In one recent outbreak, more than 20 cases of human illness were linked to dog food made at one plant and contaminated with salmonella. The initial symptoms of illness caused by salmonella, nausea, diarrhea, and vomiting, are the same as with other types of foodborne illness. For most adults, the problem is an unpleasant nuisance or a few days in bed. But for young children, older adults, or individuals with suppressed or compromised immune systems, the illness caused by these foodborne bacteria can be very serious or even deadly. No matter whether you give your pet a commercially prepared diet or raw meat, you can avoid problems if you follow some basic, common sense food safety guidelines. Avoid buying pet food in dented cans or pet food and treats with torn packaging. Damaged packaging potentially allows pet food or treats to be exposed to harmful bacteria. Wherever you feed your pet, Try to select a location that can be easily cleaned and sanitized to eliminate possible pathways for food contamination. Be sure to wash the counters, floors, and any contact surfaces with soap and warm water whenever pet food or treats come in contact with them. Wash your hands after handling pet food. Wash bowls and utensils used for pet food with soap and warm water to remove harmful bacteria that may be present. Using utensils strictly for pet food is an extra precaution against the possible transfer of bacteria from pet food to human food. After opening a can of moist or semi-moist pet food, seal it and properly store any unused portion in the refrigerator. Keep dry pet foods in a cool, dry place and sealed in a container to prevent spoilage. No matter how you store your pet food, be sure to keep the original packaging Product information contained on the bag, including the manufacturer's information, lot code, UPC number, and expiration date, is helpful in an investigation if pet food is suspected as a source of an illness. If you're handling raw pet food, including frozen meats, take the same precautions as you would with any other raw meat product. Teach family, including your children, about these important safety steps so they can help protect themselves and others from illness. Bacterial contamination is one potential problem with pet food, but there are others, like contamination with chemicals or toxins, or including too much or too little of certain ingredients during manufacturing. While these contaminants might not harm humans, they can present a serious risk to your pet. What should you do if you suspect a problem with pet food or treats? You know, of course, to get medical attention if someone in your family gets sick. The same should be true for your pet. If your pet shows signs of illness, your veterinarian is the person who can help the most. She or he will be able to decide on a course of treatment by examining your pet. FDA can't help you treat your pet. The company that manufactured the food can't deliver the needed treatment and neither can the store that sold you the product. So please call your veterinarian. And even though the manufacturer can't help treat your pet, you should still notify the company. You can find the manufacturer's contact information on the product packaging. And if you think pet food or treats have made your pet sick, someone else's pet sick, or made someone in your family sick, report it to FDA. We review all complaints we receive 
Your report can help us protect the health of who knows how many people and pets. It will be compared with other complaints we've received to help us determine where there are problems. Reporting the problem is easy. You or your veterinarian should contact FDA and give us as much information as you can about the product and what happened. You can do this in one of two ways. You can make a call to your state's FDA Consumer Complaint Coordinator. You'll find the phone number on the FDA website, www.fda.gov forward slash pet food complaints or you can file a report online through FDA's safety reporting portal. Whether you report the problem to FDA by phone or the internet, we'll need some specific information. We need to know the type of pet food or treat and whether it was for dogs, cats, or other pets. We also need to know the brand and the manufacturer, where and when it was purchased, as well as any information found on the packaging, like lot numbers and when it was manufactured. All this information will help us determine if there's a problem with the pet food. If there is, this information will make it easier for us and the manufacturer to get the effective products off of the market and to begin to identify what went wrong. And just like many of you, we too are pet owners who think of our pets as members of our families. This makes our work of protecting the safety of their food especially important to us. We look forward to working with you to keep all of our pets safe and healthy. Thank you.